So there are a lot of questions about those details of how many pounds will be there, how many pounds will be run, how many pounds will be there. There are legitimate questions like that at this particular moment in time cannot be answered. Now, I understand that as a neighbor looking at a panel, it doesn't matter whether it's one or whether it's 20,000. It's, it's going to be an issue that needs to be addressed. So I can understand that. I can understand that. Uh, you had asked about the pines. Uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Dan has been on the property one time when we originally looked at it. I could be wrong when that visited after that. The main portion of the property is pecan oil. On the eastern side, I'm sorry, on the western side, there is a strip of pines, and that's what you were asking about. Mm -hmm. uh, those pines are actually already in the contract to be cut by Forbes Timber. However, because of the price drop in timber in the last six to eight months, I put that contract on hold. I have a lot of other property on the parent track that is pine timber, and it's just time for it to be cut and replanted. Replant. So as far as those pines are concerned, um, that's actually part of the fire station project on my property. It's time for them to be cleared up and replanted anyway, whether this project takes place or not. So it would be me taking those pines down before any solar panels go in that anyway. So uh, I just want to answer your question about the pines because I need to have questions. Uh, Mr. I'm concerned for my neighbor's well-being. I will be standing here in line to if I told y'all what. I am. They're good people, and they need answers to their questions. I love them. They're my neighbor. But I think that the variance of what the zone requires is a burden because of the height of the shape. If the property is going to be valuable for a solar project, it needs access to sunshine. Adding some shorter shrubs that will better hide the solar panel is probably an order. And I may end up having to pay for some of that since I said it, but I think it's an order because I don't be a good neighbor. Okay? But to have a large, tall shade tree that's going to take up uh, another two times its height in shade in the evening, I think it's unreasonable. I believe that's why the request was made for very, and I think it can be substantiated. And like I said, there are a lot of solar projects in the county. We can go to them this afternoon. Some of them have no vegetation. Some of them have a fence. Some of them don't have a fence. I rent equipment to companies that build all of these kind of projects. And I know I've got equipment on three different projects right now, uh, and there's a chain on the fence around it. And that's all. So I think the proposal uh, may need to be adjusted. It may cost me out of my pocket, but I think it's the right thing to do for the project and for the nation. So I would appreciate it if you would consider the high issue of the shed tree. Okay. When you said four trees and 25 shrubs, were those shade trees or could they just be any size tree? Yes, ma'am. The, the code reads that when you're looking at landscaping, this next year, you're usually looking at buffer as well. Not always the case, but most most. Of them. And it, it basically says considering all trees, uh, whether it's coming from landscaping requirement or buffer, 25% of that number needs to be planted. You could designate just trees, not canopy trees. Well, canopy trees.
trees being your larger type trees and the other being shade trees or small trees, if you will. But the cold requires 25% of them to be canyon trees. I have most rudely extracted my phone and asked it a question. Um, Leland cypress grow in relatively poor culture plants have been grown to know heights of 15 meters or 49 feet. So a Leland cypress could be 49 feet tall times 250 feet in the shade of the afternoon. It does it tell you there what the rate of growth is for a Leland cypress? In 16 years. So in half the time that it would take to leave, it would be 49 feet tall. Leland, I, I did notice the Leland Cypress was in a uh, it, it wouldn't have been in mine because because I've been in the plant business and I know the characteristics of the Leland and I was thinking it was more like 20 year mature. But uh, I would not want to plant a Leland down, number one because of the survival rate and number two because of the height. Well, and then again, when they die, they get some yeah, I'm not going to be able to do the fruit. Yeah. But a lot of ones I plan to do. And I have a question for Mr. Stevenson. You said the, the solar panels are six to eight feet tall. Uh, yes, we mounted on there. Right, yes. So if we had a shrub that was 10 to 12 feet tall, we couldn't see it. If we had two rows of those shrubs, then we definitely couldn't see it. They were all once they get up to right, 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 right. Well, you know, and to follow up on your thought, you know, well, I, I don't step on any toes here, but I know part of the, the county's definition of a canopy tree, a crate yeah, I, falls into that category. I, and I would, I, would, yeah, yeah. I would tell you that if you plant canopy trees, the canopy's going to grow up, and you're going to be looking up under right, the canopy. Right. That's why you have to have shrubs too, because the canopy so, tree covers the top of it. Yeah, that's why they call for both to uh, cut down noise coming out and site and on high end level. Yeah. Anyone have any questions for me? Yeah, I have any other questions? I appreciate the opportunity to address you. And I am glad to bring all the questions if you have. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add one point on that. Cypress. Yeah, that would, so those that no state buffer will be required by the zoning code and be a part of the project. So we need to trim, trim the height of the cap. The protocol for finding the right species is that we will work with the local nursery to understand what will grow up in those open soils and serve the provide. Anyone else here in support and would like to speak? Is there anyone here that has a question about what's being proposed or is opposed to it? If so, please come to the lectern. Give me your name and address for the record. My name is Mike Bland. Uh, I live at 3029 McCain Plantation Road in Valdosta. I'm immediately laid under me to south. Of the property, and I do want to reiterate uh, what my neighbor Charles said. We're good neighbors. We're not opposed to our neighbors in any way. We're opposed to the variance. That's why we're here. And, uh, and I did uh, hand out that letter, and I do want to uh, take advantage. Actually, I was going to show you, show this map myself. You know, let me get a different map that will make it very clear who the landowners are around this piece of property. Okay, you see where the solar panels are right there? That's here. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to kind of go down here. So the solar panels will be in here. And as uh, my neighbor Charles uh, Weatherington also specified, we're buying, uh, my wife and I are in the process of buying this property from them. We're good day. I mean, um, and actually we're covering generations worth of stuff and doing that. So, so that solar panel will be in here. So we're in this property immediately to the south, immediately to the east and to the west. This is all O'Neill property. 
Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Neill's past, Ms. O'Neill is here. So this is this is where they're requesting the variance to the buffer is actually on the uh, east, the south, and the west. Okay. And, and so you can see where we are in relation to that. Um, I'm going to try to slow this down here just a little bit. If you haven't been out there, and I appreciate y'all coming out. got a short video that I did just to show you what it looks like. That's what we do in the north. Okay. That's where the panels would start if they did the maximum amount. And I know Mr. Charles said 10 to 30 acres. It goes down here. Into our, our, through our property into this lake. And, uh, and I'm not trying to be ugly, Mr. Stevenson, but he said, you know, at the end of the project, to restore it to its original condition, you can't. I mean, you can take down, you know, all, all the trees that are there, so it can't be restored uh, to its original condition. And, uh, you know, there are some concerns. And I'm, I, I certainly, and Charles and I, we talked about this the other night at our home, it's a relatively new technology, so I don't think we reached the end life on a lot of these things, and we don't know if there are hazardous things that will happen towards the end of the life cycle. Uh, I did have an article that alarmed me, quite frankly, um, and I think I discussed this uh, with this stretch of Earth that noon. Normally, when I drive by a solar panel, I go, "All right, renewable energy." You know, yeah, I'm in. You know, this is good. You know, but it's not out of my front door. I can see it. And if it was the maximum extent, it would only be 150 yards from our front door, you know, as we come out. And I did look at some math, and, and this is this is just what I did. I went online, kind of like you just did, and I Googled, so how many panels fit in an acre, you know? And uh, the guy who did the math said, well, if I lay them all down, which we're not going to be, 2,000 per acre. But if you tilt them up, you can have up to 1,600 panels per acre. Now I'm doing more math. So 1,600 pounds per acre maximum times 30 acres maximum is 48,000 pounds. And, and there is no way that we want to see uh, uh, a nice array of uh, uniform uh, you know, field of panels out there uh, in addition to uh, the uh, inverters, the cooling fans, the inverters, hearing that hum that would be there during the day. Now, as, a, as I understand, I don't know about this, but I've done my research that at night, as everything cools down, well, now they're not working anymore. But, you know, these are 48,000 potential machines in place of countryside, you know. And, and where that land is, I think it's already been mentioned, uh, Ms. Hansen mentioned it earlier, is a high part of that, uh, that field. And I did this, this is Google Earth, so... I'm using here. This would be the maximum extent, okay? And it would flow down into our lake. There's our house right there, the red roof on it. Okay, so it would flow down into there. It would flow down this way towards the golf course. And it would flow down this way where there are two more ponds, okay? And again, this is all O'Neill property and, and my wife and I's property, too. Uh, there's, we already have that one right there. So there's our house right there. You can see how close it is if, to the southern border if it was a maximum project. Uh, and then this other view here, you can see Highway 84 is looking from the north. Here's Highway 84 to the south. Again, it flows down this way towards Kangaroo Forest, flows down that way to O'Neill Property, <coughs> flows down this way into our lake. Now, uh, and I, I know, I'm, I'll, I'll just plead complete ignorance, um, but I read this article that alarmed me, and I, I shared it with my neighbor too, just because we're kind of all learning this, and I do have a few copies. And the title of it is, if solar panels are so clean, why do they produce so much toxic waste? And, you know, I'm like, well, there's people on all sides of this. There are. I mean, there's going to be somebody say there's, there's nothing unclean about this. And then you get the other side that says, you know, this will, we're all going to die sooner because of this. And uh, this particular fellow, the reason it caught my eye, it's in Forbes magazine. And he is, he is labeled, this writer, by Time Magazine as a hero of the environment. So I'm like, okay. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to take a look at this. So I only got, uh, I think, four copies. I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't make it up. Uh, let's go around here. 
but it kind of sounds like, and I'm, just, I'm not putting anything more today, but it kind of sounds like we're going to be putting this off a little bit anyhow because there's some other issues we're looking for. But I would ask that you would consider some of the information in that article. And uh, my wife and I have called somebody who's in the solar industry. She asked if she not give her name uh, or the company, but she said, I wouldn't want the water running off in my lake. Those are her words. Okay? She did say there is a hum to a good sized field. Now, it depends on the number of verbs. That there is a hum that, that is distinctive, you know, uh, within verbs. So, you know, that obviously is going to impact us where we live. And I'm trying to look through the code here, uh, Ms. Well, I, 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 oh, okay. I do have a question for you. Um, if we were to grant a variance to the canopy, but not to the shrubbery, and said that they had to have meet the 30 feet of buffering and two rows of shrubbery that would be of some height. What what height would be flat with you? You know, because I don't know, and I'm not familiar with you know, like standing next to one and doing all that kind of gauging. And, and I'll just I'm going to cut all the way to the bottom line because I know we've been here. Bottom line is, is we, we don't want a, a, any change to the variance that's in the code. It's there for a reason. It's a good reason. I've read through some of this even before coming here. Again, yeah, this piece of paper is online. It's a good, good product, I believe. Um, but we would want to see it or hear it if it's going to go through. That's, so we want whatever buffer is defined. However that buffer is defined, Ms. Gretchen, so that we don't have to look at it and we don't have to hear it. Um, and I don't know what that requires, but I'm like, um, okay, well, right, right, right now, the, the requirement is that um, for every for every 100 linear feet, they had a fence. They would have um, three shade trees and 19 shrubs. No. I agree with you. The shade trees are kind of irrelevant. That's an example. In, in my opinion. I mean, shade, shade trees don't really matter. It's just, right. so you know, it removes the gave, aesthetic appeal of our property. If we, sure. if we gave them a variance on the shade trees, mm -hmm. not the shrubbery. Yeah. More, more shrubs, better. better.
My name is Melissa Dice. I live at 2430 Meadowbrook Drive, and I prepared this to keep it succinct. Uh, board members, as a member of Glory Hill Cowboy Church, I'm appealing to your awareness of the proposed solar panel farm outside the front door of Mike and Sonny Bland, our pastors. Since the church began in 2004, our pastors have used their home and adjacent properties for ministry activities and events. Just like any other church in our area, these activities have included retreats, weddings, and special occasions, including our annual church homecoming anniversary celebration each May. And for those of you that have been out to what we call the Hill, that's what we call the pastor's home and property, we call it the Hill, you know how beautiful it is. What is unique to our church ministry are the outdoor events hosted at the church. The pastor's home and the adjacent properties that have included trail rides, round pin demonstrations, and other equine activities. With much gratitude, we can say the landowners, Charles and his family, adjacent to the O'Neill and pastor's property, have always provided full agreement and support to these ministry activities, and we have done our very best to be good neighbors. The proposed solar farm is an incursion not only on the residential landowners, our pastors, but also the unique ministry center of Glory Hill Cowboy Church. People inside and outside the community recognize and join in the activities of Glory Hill Cowboy Church regularly. Having solar, solar panels at the back door of the ministry property would have a tremendous and negative impact on the pastor's home life and on the ongoing church ministry work. Any church in this county would be opposed to such a farm being built next to their parsonage and ministry center. We may be a smaller church with a small building, but our ministry work is not confined to the indoors as most churches that have an activity center. Our church has an outdoor activity center that appeals to many through our community and surrounding areas. Accordingly, we also have plans for future growth ourselves. The proposed solar farm would have a lasting, permanent, and negative impact not only on present plans, but also on those future plans. As I've said, I believe it is safe to say that any church in not only this county, but the state, would be deeply agreed that such a project would be allowed to be built next to their property and would appreciate wise governance that safeguards the future of church ministries in the community while also leading the way in appropriate and necessary technological advances. Mr. and Mrs. Glenn O'Neill, lifelong residents, community leaders, and servants, as well as members of Glory Hill Cowboy Church, graciously and sacrificially gave the church a prime part of their property to support and serve the ministry of the church and to serve our community at large. They intended for their property to have a lasting positive effect on the community they love and serve. And Ms. O'Neill is here today to testify to this intention. I would kindly ask that the board only allow the solar farm and required buffer to be mutually beneficial to not only the property owners of the proposed solar farm, but to our pastors, church ministry, and the community at large. Thank you for your time, service, and assistance to the citizens of this county and to our church. Thank you.
Fred Jarrett. He played. We wouldn't be here now. And I hope they would love that piece of content. If you had to walk down my back porch, I got my beer slate. I was working a hard deal that day. And I had to look across the pond and see a soda can. I don't want that. Well, guess what we have? We got the Steve Dunn. It's all that. We bought it, spent $30,000. It was in $15,000, made it at $15,000. And we raised the other 10,000 to have a fish price. Try to stop the dump. The horse we lost, try to dump. And it rained in trash. And New York, Chattanooga, bring it out here, dump it, try to plant it. And talk to stuff at night. Goes on right now. They took that big old house, I call it Mount Trash Mall. I got to look at it every day. I already got something to look at, I don't want to. People come out here to my fish fries, and I have 20, 30, 50 people. They can't believe how beautiful it is out there. How quiet. Come out to fire, fish fry, or to cook food. Flies. Guess where it comes from? The land. I have food for flies. The fortune is now is over here. They capped it off. But I still got the odor. Won't come very often, so they get them with the methane gas out there. So when they built that, they rerouted the water. When I built that June Bug Lake, we call it, that's my mom's name, the big name. They rerouted the water, and we lost the watershed. So I found a pond never filled up the property. So we still get gloves in the watershed, and our field, but well, we're going, this soap panel won't be a problem. Now I have, have some other people told me, there's certain two kinds of towns. There's a cheaper one, there's a expensive one coming out of China. They don't want to get one out of China because the tariffs. It costs more money, so they get them the cheap pound. And the cheap pound is only mercury. Well, get mercury in the ground is there forever. We got artificial springs up there on our farm. Forty good golf course, plenty of want to build. We just want to do a 500 acre lake. But they don't want nobody to have a part of the Blake, so I didn't find out that my father said, no, I'll buy your side. No, he won't do that. Because of the water. No, he was out of the water. All the spring was on my property. So, y'all got to go see the spring. The water is probably about that deep. It's wide as it is to run it wide open. It comes out of the ground by the time I milk on it. And it goes straight through the river. So, out there we've got a sewer plant. We've got Mount Trashmore, then they built the industrial park, called Wellington Industrial Park. Well, guess what they put there? Caterpillar plant. Well, you have a telephone come on at 6 o'clock in the morning, I can hear it in my house. Well, it's outside for this too, it's loud. Dang! Wake up, wake up. So the neighbors all got together, they turned down the phone. But every time they back up a semi, or back up a tractor, beep, 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 beep. I got to hear that. So I'm asking y'all, we don't need anything out there. My father worked his butt off, two or three jobs to keep that form. Now we inherit it. And I, I don't want to see anything else. And, and the best book would be different if it does happen. It's a legal act. It's some kind of plan that you see on the interstate. That's on eight to sixteen between the off ramp. But it grows. It grows tired of this building on cut. No man can come through it, is, and you can't see through it. It's better, best buff is better than a fence. We all can look at that, it's out there on the right by 16, you'll see. That's a plant that you planted. But I don't want to be seeing that plant planted because I like to be. And it's invasive. Oh, yeah, you got to keep it trimming. But that's all I got to say. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? I actually had a question. When I drove out there today and drove behind the barn, are you higher on your property, um, or do you go? No, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm higher. You're higher, so you're looking down. Um, I'm looking down into in, the, into that yeah. across the across the lake and then across the mics and then yeah. then to that field. So you're above all of those. Yep. Okay. And I work hard on my place. 
with the exception of the shade tree and substitute shade tree with the new and improved blue and cypress. They have a new one now that's the blue tree and it's a big tree and it's will block out any view.
and I think we determined you would be a, a 30, have a 30 foot wide buffer. Um, the trees, the, the um, code goes on to say for every 100 linear feet, you guys will have to plant four trees, 25 shrubs. And then we'll figure how many trees total for <coughs> landscaping and buffer. And then 25% of that, it says, has to be canopy trees, and then the remnant is small. Okay. So that's what the code says. Right. We just gave you relief for canopy trees. Okay. And along the buffer, you want to put something thick, like the leaf and cypress, instead of those canopy trees. Because that seemed to be what you were asking for relief was from canopy. Right, so that's, that's what we did. Okay. Does it have to be a certain species of the cypress? There's a new and improved. That's not good for you. Your nursery's been fine, I'll tell you. Have y'all already approved the solar panels? That's not us. Well, we have no. They, the, the solar panels can go in there by right. The only relief they were asking for was so we did they ever vote it on that or we have both to say so about it so it's in the LDR. They, that, that's, I think that's a location that might be a They can know. do that by right. They yeah. have they have the right to do that because of the zoning of their property. We we cannot stop them putting the solar panels in. That is not prohibitive. Prohibitive. In Allegheny County, that's what it's all about. I mean, well, the only thing they asked for was relief from the buffer, and that's the only that's the only variance they asked. For. It, we we don't have the power to tell them they can't put panels in. There. You got powers about to run off and all the possibility of damage and stuff like that. No, they can be some according to the zoning regulations. They can put solar panels in them. They don't have to ask anybody's permission. They must meet all of the regulations pertaining to the rest of it. Well, Lee and Cypress, they're the hardest trees to grow. They get disease very fast. Um, you can look at them, they don't do well. The best thing to pull a buffer is what I just said get stuff. What's the name of it? He got it. Uh, well, but that would be something that has to be worked out with the zoning people and whatnot concerning the buffer and all. The problem there is invasive species are specifically prohibited, and that is considered an invasive species. But the landowner won't be responsible for cleaning it up after 25 years or 15 years. They don't last 15 years or so. But all talk some of well, that have. That's, that would be in, very top. That's, that's not something that this board can have. That's going to be between the people that install it at the end of the thing. They, they don't walk away from it. They don't walk away from it. Well, then that's the dead end of the landowner. It's going to cost them more money than he ever made off of it. Well, that's something that's going to be handled through the courts, probably, between them and Charles because. That's the option in the preview of this bullet. Get rid of the mercury from what about the, what about the runoff running in a pond? Sir, we eat fish. They, I'm going to say it one last time. They can put solar panels in there. Yeah, but they contaminate the pond. By right. By it's right. not prohibited. They, they can waste money. So the next thing is another load. This panel is at all they can do. Sir, I'm feeling like you. Well, let's talk some more. This is just the start of it. This is the end. Thank you all. I have to beat the sister. Sure, we're going to hire Okay. Call the boys off. <coughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm wasting my time. Okay. We still got two more cases we need to hear.
19-16 Hogan or Frank Reagan. Okay, 
I have, before you finish, I have a question at this point. Yes, sir. All right. When you say expand, are you talking about buying more land around you, or are you saying that to change what you are doing on the property that you own? Yes, sir. Uh, no, we're definitely not trying to buy any additional property. Uh, no, it's just, just changing our business up a little bit. A lot, I believe we're one of the only youth pool at uh, South Jar or something in Austin on Pokemon. Um, but one of the things that we're trying to do, something that I was working on last year, um, is adding additional buildings out there to be able to store parts that I can sell online. Um, so just, just improving the property in general. Right. Um, I, I just want to clarify yes, sir, yes, what sir. we're talking about because if you return. We don't want you to have to come before us every time you say, well, I want to enlarge this building or I want to make this change here and come. I understand what you're saying. I just want to make sure that we were all on the same page that we were not talking about <coughs> enlarging the footprint. So, yes, sir. Okay. I have uh, just one comment. It's it says here that, um, that, that there are TRC recommended with two conditions, and one of the conditions is that the applicant must repair or replace the opaque fence around the perimeter block. I drove all the way around and all the way around and all the way around, and if I had lived in one of those residences that's across the street, um, some of the places the fence is dish okay, but what I like better is that there's natural, wildly grown trees and vines and bushes and brambles and delightfulness in my mind. Um, in, so I want to make sure that when you repair the fence, if, if this is granted, that you not tear down the beautifulness of the brambles and the trees and the bushes that are on the street side. You know, that you do that. And there are places where the fence is completely gone and then the people are looking at broken down um, travel trailers, which I'm positive they don't want to be looking at. So I, I can see that this property needs to be Um So just to clarify, on, on the page you're referencing to help me out here a little bit, yes. um, that, we actually put that in there in the original application as a, as a note for uh, our last variance we received when we were trying to set up the building. Um, regarding fencing? Regarding, regarding the fencing. We tried to, to do, oh, it was almost 10 years ago now, um, when we were trying to put a large number of buildings, we ended up uh, changing our mind. And we received variance for that project with the conditions that the current fence 10 or 15 years ago needed to be repaired. Um, I will tell you right now, we do have uh, a huge tree line in the very back in, of that In property. the back, and I like that tree line a real lot, but there are places where you can see through and see to a super ugly travel trailer that nobody's living in and is yucky and on the south side. Um, anyway, so when you, I, I, that, that tree line, I like it a lot. Um, so the, if you just, um, a lot of that is like a solid a wooden fence. It's a little bit tumbled down in a couple places. There's step those babies back up. Um, put it in sections where it's missing. Um, but try not to knock down any of the trees on that tree line because it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I'll give you have some of the going through and repairing all the way around this project. But we don't intend to take down any. Okay, awesome. Any, don't don't any, take down any of those trees or brambles. On the tree and brambles. Uh, oh, count them all. Yeah, covers it up. Yes. Okay, any other thing you want to bring? I know, I'm all set. Any questions? Any discussions? Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Anyone here that is in opposition or has questions about what's being requested? Anything, ma'am? Well, I'd like to know on the, the street sign across the street from my gotta come up here. Come up here, please. Okay. Can I get your name and address for me? I have property on 